find in your Zoom toolbar. So please feel free to use the Q&A section to ask questions. All right. So uh, my name is Alex Ecker, and I'm the I'm a curriculum developer who's created this course. Uh, the web development course has been a long time coming at Code HS, and I'm excited to share this course with you uh, so you can begin to get your students excited about web development. Um, so let's take a look at what we're going to cover today. Um, we're going to start with an overview of the course, who it's for, what it covers, and some important info to keep in mind when bringing this course to your students. Uh, then we'll take a look at exactly where you can access all the needed materials for the course. Uh, we'll give you some information about our teacher testing group so you can decide if this is something that you're interested in joining. And at the end, uh, we'll have a Q&A so all of your questions can be answered by the end. All right, let's, uh, let's get started. So uh, we're going to take a deep dive now into the web development capstone overview. Uh, so the web development capstone is a full year long course designed for high school students. Uh, the course focuses primarily on how students can use JavaScript in tandem with HTML and CSS to create dynamic and responsive websites. The course is intended to be the third in a web development pathway that builds off students' former knowledge of JavaScript and HTML uh, and CSS learned in other uh, CodeHS courses. So at CodeHS, we have a web design course and an intro to computer science and JavaScript. The web development capstone is ideally a course that follows suit from those two courses. Uh, so thus, students who should be taking this course will be students that have completed both intro to computer science in JavaScript and web design, or have completed the AP computer science principles in JavaScript course, uh, which includes modules on both of these topics. So if you have any students that have taken the AP CSP course this year or the prior years, um, or have taken intro to CS in JavaScript or web design and web design, um, this course fits in well um, as a third or second in the pathway. Uh, so this is, this, it really depends on which courses your students have already taken uh, as to which, uh, whether or not they should be taking uh, this course. So what makes this course special is its use of project-based learning to assess student knowledge and its emphasis on student collaboration. Uh, throughout the course, students will engage in complex projects based on topics that they've recently covered. And we'll talk a little bit more about what some of those projects are um, in an upcoming section. Um, what's really unique about this is that each project comes equipped with an accompanying rubric that explicitly states student expectations for the project. So throughout the project, students will be asked to consult the rubric to determine if their project meets the criteria necessary for completing the assignment, as well as evaluate their peers using the rubric as guidance for feedback. Uh, so these projects emulate real world web development scenarios and they help prepare students for creating more intricate and thoughtful websites. So um, if you've taken a Code HS course before, a lot of the exercises that students complete are giving them practice on how to use different concepts or principles, right? So if we're learning about lists or we're learning about uh, the image tag, it, it gives students an opportunity to add or incorporate those new concepts into existing websites. Um, this course obviously has some of that, but there is a, a large emphasis on students developing their own websites that are fully responsive and interactive. So this course is broken down into six distinct modules and it culminates in a final project. The first module introduces how JavaScript is used in web development. So students are introduced to the script tag, the document object model, and how they can create and manipulate HTML objects to dynamically alter their web pages. By the end of the module, students will be able to create a keyboard from scratch using only JavaScript. So they learn all about event listeners and the ability to uh, incorporate uh, new elements into a web page. In the second module, students are introduced to jQuery, which is a lightweight and capable JavaScript library. Students learn how libraries can be incorporated into their websites and how to read documentation that allows them to make use of these libraries most effectively. Their newfound skills in jQuery and JavaScript will be put to the test in their first project, which is building an interactive resume. Students learn about what makes a good resume and attempt to create one that allows users to interact with the inf information provided. Students will also peer evaluate one another's resumes to see whether or not they've concluded all of the relevant information in order to create a resume and will check it against the rubric that they've, that they've been assigned so that they can see whether or not they're creating this up to the standards that are being held by the CodeHS rubric, but also by you as the teacher. 
In the fourth module, students learn how to collect and store data. Something that's very exciting about this unit is that students will be able to store their data in a real-time cloud-based database called Firebase. Each student is given a segment of the CodeHS Firebase database that they can use to store data from their individual projects. Students also learn how to use local and session storage and weigh the dangers of data collection against their potential benefit. So this is really exciting. Um, essentially, whenever a student creates a Firebase uh, project, um, it saves uh, each project as a specific data node in their own user database. Um, so students are able to access um, all of that information, not only on the web page or the program that they're currently working on, but they can access it on other uh, web pages that they might be working on. Um, so this is really useful because in the fifth project, our, the knowledge that is used in the collecting, this knowledge is then used in this collecting data project where students create a website that collects simple data from users, such as clicks and ratings. Uh, students learn about data-driven decision-making and how they can use data analytics to make informed changes to their website. Students will also create user personas based on the data they collect from users to predict how they will use their site um, and use those user personas to eventually make predictions and change how their site um, actually collects information and how they can improve their sites based off of this. So uh, students uh, from the class can use their website, a student's website, and the data that they um, are inputting into that can be saved in a Firebase cloud-based account, um, which students can then access at a later date. So this is a really exciting um, thing that we've been working on and that I think students are going to get a lot out of because we're finally incorporating some sort of uh, data collection or data storage methods in our programming. Lastly, students will learn how to build and maintain a website. So this module covers the different ways that students can buy domain names, what to consider when naming your site, and the different services available for hosting websites, and the pros and cons of using them versus trying to host them on your own. Students are encouraged to explore these different options, but are in no way expected to leave the CodeHS editor to complete any of the web development assignments. So this module is more so about uh, providing information to students about what the different options are in terms of purchasing domain names, what's an effective domain name, how to optimize the search engines for uh, your specific websites. Um, but students aren't actually expected to go out and purchase a domain name. That's something that, you know, if teachers are interested in exploring and extrapolating from this unit, um, that's something that they can do. Um, but this is really just supposed to provide students with information about these different options, how to weigh those. And so when they create their final project, they can do so in the CodeHS web, uh, in, in the CodeHS editor, but they could also do it um, by building their own website off of CodeHS with the knowledge that they've learned in this module. Um, it's important to note that there are also two bootcamp modules that can be used to refresh students on their basic HTML and J JavaScript knowledge. So at the beginning of the course, there is a pretest that evaluates student knowledge in both languages. Um, and depending on how students do on these exams, you might want to assign these units to them for extra practice. So there are these two 15 question uh, diagnostic tests at the beginning of the course that you can administer to students. Uh, depending on how they do on those, that can inform whether or not you move directly into the new material that students are gonna be learning, or if they're going to need to refresh on some of the information uh, that they've learned in previous, mod in previous courses. So, you know, if, you, if they took the web design course as ninth graders and now they're taking the web development course as 11th graders, they might forget some of the uh, important information that comes from the web design course. They can go ahead to the HTML bootcamp um, and complete some of the exercises. You can either do that as a whole class or you can assign this as supplemental material for students um, to do uh, while you're going through the course. Uh, in addition, all of the lesson plans will also include um, which assignments are going to need. Um, additional practice. So uh, in this course, there will be uh, a heavy emphasis on using lists to store data. If students haven't covered lists at all um, in previous uh, courses, in the JavaScript bootcamp, they can learn more about lists and there will be indications in the lesson plans about which exercises and lessons require the use of lists and when the supplemental materials should be used um, to refresh student knowledge. Um, 
So that's uh, the basic gist of the course, the different modules that we have. Uh, we're really excited about this, blending the different languages together um, so that students can really see how web pages uh, are created and interact with other languages that are being used. Um, so now that I've got you all excited about the content in this course, I want to show you all how you can actually access it. Um, so this course is being released in a beta version by using the following link. So if you go to codeages.com slash webdev slash start, you can join the section using the class code shown here, and you'll have access to all of the student-facing content um, that, that will be in the course. Um, so something to note, um, when you click this link, it'll automatically bring you to a page that says join this class. Um, and th this class code that's being provided here, and you should be able to see it in the chat, um, those, that will allow you to actually access the course. Um, it's really important to note that you'll be accessing it as a student. So we've created a teacher course, and then you are all students in this web development course. So you'll be able to take the course as a student, um, but you won't be able to create your own uh, your own sections or your own assignments yet. That's something that will be released um, later in the summer once the course is finished. We just want to remind you that this is a beta release. Um, so we're obviously going to continue to make changes based on feedback that we get. Um, I'm continuously updating the course uh, as, as it's being developed, but this is, a, you know, our, our beta release. Um, and so the first five units are actually included and completed for this beta. Um, so you'll notice if you enter the course, there will be all seven units, um, but units six and seven will not have any content in them currently. That's because they're still currently under development. So units one through five are complete. Uh, and you'll also notice in unit four um, that we're still developing some of the Firebase materials. So uh, obviously it's not complete, it's a work in progress, but we feel like there's a substantial amount here that you can really sink your teeth into and and get started with. Um, you can view the course syllabus for this course by going to codehs.com slash syllabus syllabus slash seven nine six eight or directly from the web development marketing page, which you can find at codehs.com slash info slash curriculum slash web underscore development. Um, and these links are going to be are provided right now by Evelyn to the chat. Um, and these items um, are going to be shared with you here, so they're a great resource to get started with. Um, another note is the syllabus is also currently under development for units six and seven, so units one through five, obviously we'll have all the content there. Units six and seven are there, but they don't include all of the specific content, so that's just something that's important to know. Um, now I wanna to talk to you a little bit about our oh, teacher testing sorry. group. Before we move on, um, we did have a question about the course itself, um, so are the, are the activities or lessons done um, for a 45 minute block or what, kind, what length of a class session are we expecting? Um, and could this course be taken in a semester? Yeah, so um, the course, is, so all of the lessons are generally speaking uh, an hour long. Um, you could squeeze them into 45 minutes, although um, I think it, it honestly just depends on your teaching style and how you plan on teaching it. Like if you have a flipped classroom, it would be definitely really easy to do it within 45 minutes. If you plan on doing all of the activities in a lesson uh, in one class period, I would say that that would take about an hour. Um, I would, I think being able to complete it in one semester would really depend just on how quickly your students are able to grasp the material and whether or not they are experienced uh, coders. Um, I would say that some of the materials that, that students are learning, it are, if they've taken Code HS courses, there's going to be a lot of brand new material here that might take a little bit of time for them to learn, specifically uh, the data collection and storage. Um, and if you really want students to build the projects out um, effectively, then they would need to take more time. Um, so I'd say that it's possible to do it within a semester, but you might want to cut out some of the projects um, or shorten some of the, the materials a little bit. Um, but this is really intended to be like a full year long course because the projects um, are something that students are supposed to spend a little more time on than, you know, your average class period or two. The projects really should be like a week or two of students really developing and, and creating these, these websites. Awesome. And then we had another question. Um, so do you think that this course would be, uh, could be used in middle school? And uh, this person is saying that they do currently teach um, web development curriculum at their school. 
things I'm reading. From. I, I mean, I would never want to say that it's not, you know, like I, I don't want to restrict anybody from being able to use the material. I'd say that it's a little bit more on the challenging side. Um, because we're considering this like a third level course, we, uh, there, like some like the basic JavaScript and the basic HTML um, are things that we assume students already know. So it glosses over those things and dives directly into the material. That's kind of why we have the boot camp. Um, I would really say if your students are passing the diagnostic exams with flying colors, or you see that they really have a proficiency for this, then I'd say that it's definitely possible for middle school students to complete this. Um, it, it just, you know, goes pretty quickly through these different concepts. So I'd say if you, you know, you know your students better than, than we do, if you think that it will work for middle schoolers, then, then I'd say go ahead and use that. But I would say that it is a little more challenging than some of our earlier courses. Yeah, definitely. Um, so just to, I think, can we go back to the prerequisites or uh, the units that we're, I uh, think that students should review beforehand? We have some questions just about, you know, is this course, could this course be used for beginners um, as a like, beginner web development course? So um, you could, in theory, use this at, so, so what we recommend is that students have taken the intro to computer science and JavaScript and the web design course or APCSP that touches on um, HTML and JavaScript, that's recommended um, because we do include these two boot camps at the beginning. Um, you could, in theory, teach this as a beginner web development course. Um, so the, the boot camp units gloss over a couple of things as well. Um, so if you've taken any uh, Code HS courses, um, the the boot camps don't include any of the graphics programs that students might have been learning um, prior. Um, so this kind of glosses over that and just teaches the bare bones about you know booleans and iteration um, and going through just basic JavaScript control structures. Um, in in regards to the HTML as well, we have some advanced HTML units um, that talk about Bootstrap and Intro to Design. Those units don't exist either in the boot camp. So I'd say if your students have a knack for coding, um, then you could teach us as an intro to, to develop an intro course in web development. Um, but it is recommended that they've taken a course, at least a course before, just because a lot of the material at the beginning, at least, we would say I would say in the first unit, um, glosses over you know just general JavaScript control structures and general HTML structures as well. Um, so you know th this. Uh, course is really intended for students that do have this knowledge, but, you know, the boot camps, the boot camps have all of the information necessary to succeed. It just depends on, you know, whether or not students need additional support to get there or if they're, you know, gravitating to, towards these concepts easily. I hope that clarifies things a little bit. Yeah, I think that's helpful. Uh, I would say we can go ahead. We have a few more questions, but we'll, we can hold till the end for, for these ones. Great. Thanks, Alex. Okay, so what I want to talk to you about now, and we've got a lot of questions. Uh, I think obviously, because you know your students well, taking the course yourself would be a good grasp or a barometer for determining whether or not students, your, your students would be able to handle this. Um, but I want to talk to you about this uh, teacher testing group that we're going to develop and how you can get involved. Um, so because this course is much different than the other courses we offer on Code HS, we want to be sure that the materials we're providing for teachers and students are highly effective, informative, and fun. Um, so in order to be sure of this, we'd like to connect with teachers that expect to use this course with their students um, and give you a chance to be heard. So we understand that commitment levels and available timeframes may vary greatly depending on your situ situation. Uh, so we have multiple ways to get involved. So um, testers can be given access to our feedback system where comments and suggestions can be left on individual items as you go through the course, or you can choose to be a part of phone calls with the Code HS developers and other testers. So what we're trying to develop here is a way to fully engage you all in testing in order to improve this course. Um, one way to do that is by filling out this Google form that we have. So if you're, if you're interested at all in getting involved in this testing group, uh, please fill out this Google form, which you can find at codehs.com slash web dev slash testing. Um, so basically, this form is just going to ask what your interest level is uh, in terms of 
uh, being a part of this testing group, whether or not you want to be able to provide feedback on the exercises, whether or not you'd be interested in participating in group calls to talk about um, this, this, this course. Um, so I thank you in advance for considering joining this group to make this course as great as possible. Uh, and I really look forward to working with any teacher that is interested in, uh, in participating in this, in this group. Because um, we're really interested in making sure that this course is beneficial to students to make it highly engaging, interactive, fun, but also relevant to web development. Uh, so we really want to hear from teachers um, on the beta materials that we've been sending out. So please feel free to fill out this Google form and we'll get back to you about uh, how you can provide feedback. All right. So I know that was a ton of information. Hopefully a lot of it was exciting and useful. Um, I'd love to open it up for questions for anybody that has them uh, so that we can continue to get some more info out there about this web development course. Great, Alex, um, we just had a request. Can you put up the pathway slide that was at the beginning um, for the web development pathway? Absolutely. Awesome. And then, um, we had a question about Firebase. So is Firebase acting as a server-side database? Um, and if so, what language do you use to access it? Yeah, so this is really exciting. Um, Firebase is like a back-end as a service. So it, it's a cloud-based database where all we have to do is include uh, a CDN uh, to access Firebase. So we've been working on the back-end to actually create the CDN. So students just have to type in a script into their program and they can access Firebase using strictly Java-based code, uh, Java-based, uh, sorry, JavaScript. Um, and so this is really exciting. Um, instead of having to teach students uh, other languages, right, like SQL or PHP uh, in order to interact with data servers, they can continue to use and learn JavaScript and write uh, into the Firebase database. So this is a really lightweight way for us to teach uh, databases. Um, our current editor doesn't allow for us to interact with the da with data servers directly. So this is kind of a good middleman approach uh, where students are actually able to, you know, they're, they're, they're actually putting real data into a database that's live and real time. Um, it's just that they're going to be using JavaScript to do so. So they're learning a lot of the important concepts around data collection and storage, but they're able to do so using JavaScript, a language they're already learning a little bit more about. So that's a really cool aspect about Firebase that, uh, that we really, that, that drew us to it and, and why we think it's such an effective solution uh, for, for students. Great, and then we had a, a, just a note about Firebase. So uh, if somebody's school doesn't allow them to use Firebase, um, is it easy to cut out those lessons um, and just do the rest of the course or do you have any other ideas there? Yeah, so um, we initially, so the answer is yes. Um, we, we teach the ability to store data using local storage and session storage prior to having students learn about Firebase. Uh, so all of the projects that follow, um, the learning about collecting and storing data, um, gives students the option to store data either using local storage or to store data using Firebase. Um, so the Unit 5 Collecting Data Project, students could complete that with uh, local storage, but that comes with some caveats. Um, obviously, you can't just share your link to your, you can't just share your website to your friends and collect data on what they're, you know, how they're clicking on things using local storage, right? Because that information is going to be stored locally on their browser. Um, so there's just some workarounds that you need to work on for that specific project. Um, but you would only need to remove, I'd say like four, we're still developing it. So it's between like three and five lessons that would specifically focus on Firebase. So it's really a small percentage of all of the lessons that students will cover in regards to collecting and storing data. Awesome, thanks. Um, we had a question about teacher support materials. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what teachers will uh, be able to use that we're, we're developing for them, like lesson plans, um, activities? Absolutely. Yeah, so um, for every single uh, exercise in the course, there will be problem guides uh, associated with each of those. So um, teachers can look at the problem guides and see what are some uh, frequently asked questions that students might have for that particular exercise with answers related to the specific exercise, how the auto graders are working on the site, um, as well as just frequently asked questions that students might have. We also have lesson plans for all um, lessons in the course. Um, Currently, we have lessons for the first, we have lesson plans and problem guides developed for the first two lessons. So you'll be able to see those uh, in the beta group. Um, but 
for all of the lessons in the course, we will have um, we will have lesson plans available. Those lesson plans include discussion questions to help fuel discussion at the beginning of the class. They'll also include handouts so that you can use those as supplemental materials or within the class period. Uh, it'll also include like prior knowledge that students will need to have, um, as well as like teaching and learning strategies, a step-by-step -step guide for how you can run the classroom for that particular exercise. Um, We'll also have auto graders on some of the assignments because a lot of these assignments are gonna be more complex and they will include a lot of student um, uh, choice. Uh, we won't necessarily have auto graders on all of them, but auto graders are a good support for teachers in order to help check to make sure students are, creating the are completing the assignments correctly, factually, and they're not cutting any corners. Um, so I'd say that these are a bunch of the different supports that we have. And CodeHS offers a bunch of other supports too, like we have teacher forums that teachers can go to to get answers to their questions, as well as a, a, diver, uh, a comprehensive knowledge base that includes a lot of answers to these different questions. Um, I would highly recommend going to help.codehs.com to look uh, a little bit more at the knowledge base and some of the things that we offer in terms of helping you figure out how to use CodeHS most effectively. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then just to clarify, so the solutions to the exercises are free, that those are not under a paid plan. Cool. Um, we had a few questions about certifications. So um, are there any certifications students could get from this course? Um, and then specifically, we had a question about the MTA, um, I'm, I'm assuming web development certification. Yeah, so um, we, if you're unfamiliar, Code HS actually just recently released its own certification exams. Um, we have one currently for JavaScript and web design, but we do not have one yet for the web development capstone. Um, I'm this is something that I'm assuming that we are planning on creating and developing. Navlin's shaking her head yes. So the plan is to create a Code HS certification. Um, the course is, um, the course does touch on uh, the MTA certification. So some of the lessons and the specific topics that were covered in this course um, directly relates to the MTA certifications. Um, I would say that our existing JavaScript course covers about 70% of the existing intro to JavaScript MTA certification. Um, and that this one will in theory cover the rest of that. Um, so this co course should cover 100% the MTA certification, if not very close to 100%. Um, and that's something that we're actively paying attention to, considering and aligning our courses to different certification standards. Awesome. Um, we had a question. Uh, the so the course, uh, the cost is free to use this course. Um, so curriculum, all of the curriculum at Code HS is free. There is no cost. Um, we do have the pro plan, which has some of the more advanced teacher tools and resources, um, but the course itself is free. Um, just a clarification. So can people uh, in the course, they're building these dynamic websites. So something that like might include a user login, user profiles, um, take and store data. Yes, yeah, so that, that, is, uh, that is absolutely within the scope of this course. Um, students cr will create a bunch of different exercises and activities related to that, specifically in the fifth module when they're doing the collecting and storing data um, project, they will be creating websites that are specifically storing and getting information from users. Um, we don't incur actively encourage them to create websites that store passwords. Obviously, we know that there are security risks related to that specifically. Um, and we talk about some of those security risks in our data collection unit. Um, so, you know, we're encouraging students to collect data mindfully um, and also data that they can use to actually inform um, the betterment of their websites, right? So if, if people are clicking on specific things, what does that say about um, user interaction with that? How are they rating things? And we also talk about behavioral data. Um, we talk about different forms of data. So whether or not getting data from users specifically, like from their mouth, um, is just as valuable as data that we're collecting objectively from clicks and other things like that. So um, students are going to be collecting data and getting user input from, um, from their web pages. Awesome. Um, it looks like we don't have any other questions right now. Um, so we can maybe hang out for a few more minutes. Um, but 
otherwise, thanks for coming, everybody. Yeah, and I would just like to say, um, we have a couple of upcoming webinars. Uh, you can check them out at codehs.com slash webinars. Um, two that I wanted to highlight here are the Intro to CS and JavaScript course overview and the web design course overview. So if you're not familiar with CodeHS courses specifically, um, these two webinars are going to go over what is, what, a, what is included in the JavaScript uh, course and what is included in the web design course. As you might remember, these are the two prerequisites for the web development capstone. So if you want to learn more about these courses specifically, I'd highly recommend going to these two webinars. I'll actually be leading the one on web design. So if you had fun here today, you might have fun uh, on Wednesday, June 10th. Um, so yeah, these are some webinars that you can check out. And there are obviously all of the other courses that we have on, on CodeHS. We will have webinars for those as well. So you can go to codehs.com slash webinars to see when those webinars are as well. Great. Um, we had two people with the same question. So are there any changes this year to the Intro to JavaScript or Web Design courses? Um, there aren't any substantial changes that we're making to those courses. Um, we might be making edits to specific exercises based off of teacher feedback and student feedback, um, but there aren't any plans to alter those courses substantially. This is supposed to be kind of like the next step that blends those two courses together and adds an additional layer of sophistication to students as they're learning these different languages. Yes. Um, we had a question on certifications. Um, I'm not sure if this person is talking about the Code HS certifications or other certifications, but I can send out a link for um, the Code HS certifications. Perfect. Okay, so that's all the information that we wanted to um, share out to you all about the Web Development Capstone course. If you have any more questions, please feel free to stay on the Zoom call uh, to ask your questions. Otherwise, um, it was a pleasure uh, getting to talk to you today. I really hope a lot of you sign up to do the uh, testing groups, um, and I hope that you enjoy this new addition to the CodeHS course library. Um, so feel free to email us at hello at codehs.com. Um, if you want to uh, provide us any more feedback or you want to get more information from us um, and have a great rest of your day. Great. Um, yeah, just a few last minute questions that we have. So first, uh, there's a question on um, will there be a webinar on HTML CSS? So the answer to that is actually yes. Um, we are going to be hosting a webinar on our existing web design course. We're also going to be hosting um, a free PD. Um, it'll be a virtual PD this summer. Um, if you just go to codehs.com slash PD, um, you'll find information on those summer events. Um, but I encourage you to check that out. Um, if you do have feedback on existing CodeHS courses, always email us, hello at codehs.com. I posted that in the chat. We love to hear from you. Um, so definitely get in touch if you see something that could be improved. Um, let's see. And we will be sending out a recording um, of this webinar uh, to everybody tomorrow at the very latest. Um, if people do have any other questions, let's see. Uh, will the new APCSP course no longer have a web design unit? No, it won't. Uh, web design will be in the supplemental materials, but we did take it out just because um, it took uh, kind of a lot of time and we wanted to make sure that the course was paced appropriately for classes. Um, there are self-paced PD courses. So we do have online PD courses uh, that teachers can do in their own time. Get in touch with us, um, hello at codehs.com to learn more. Um, let's see. I'm also going to send out a link to all of our webinars. Um, so I think some people have not been receiving the recordings of our webinars. Um, it might be if you've unsubscribed to CodeHS uh, emails, we, uh, there's some issue there. 
but you can always see the recordings of all of our webinars at the help.codehs.com. Um, we have a whole collection of webinars. There will be a webinar and a PD for the new APCSP course. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, I believe it should be listed under this webinar collection as well. I'm not entirely sure how you can resubscribe, um, but get in touch with us. If you email us, we can, we can take a look there. Um, great. So uh, anybody, any other questions, um, you can go ahead and just send us an email at hello.codehs.com and we will get back to you. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much. Take care, everybody.